Welcome to the SEO Podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, the owner of EWR Digital, or one of the owners. My name is Matt Bertram. I'm the lead strategist at EWR Digital. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition of this podcast. This is podcast 571. Wow. 571. Mm. Um, by the way, if, if, if at any point I sound weird, it's because I just got Invisalign. Oh, for okay. my teeth. And so they look great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how ironic is that? Uh, so I'm not used to them. I might be like clenching. I don't know what what all is going to happen. Uh, but we do or and we do have an, <laughs> a review. The equipment is falling apart. I'm trying to break it. And this is an awesome review. Uh, it's Emily Talbert. Turns out it's about you, Matt. Oh, it is. You probably you probably knew that. Uh, Matt is an absolute invaluable source of knowledge that is intersectional amongst all in industries. We'll see if we can translate that here in a second. He is an authority on all things media strategy and marketing, and generously shares his knowledge to make you and your brand the best, most informed, prepared, and fine tuned version of itself. Wow, so nice. His <laughs> insights and expertise are all communicated in a friendly, approachable, and easily digestible way. 10 out of 10 would recommend utilizing Matt and EWR Digital for all of your marketing needs. Patif to Emily and Patif yeah. to you, man. Like <laughs> that's that's that sounds like it was a hard earned review. Yeah, well, she's a sommelier. Uh, oh, wow, she's a cool. yeah, she's a so, wine consultant. So did, did, did the work happen while you were drinking, and then that's why the positive <laughs> review is so good? <laughs> I don't know. If she left the review while she was drinking, oh, okay, maybe. Okay. But but uh, no, we we have uh, been helping their business grow. They do a lot of events and. Um, uh, white uh what is it called private labeling for wines and wine consulting of restaurants so um you know they're doing a lot of stuff on social media and trying to expand their brand and uh really that's the big thing is you have your online presence has to mirror your offering in person right and they're very very premium mm -hmm. and so we've been working with them on brand strategy and a number of other things to help them uh uptick what they're what they're doing so uh we've been definitely working closely together so we've been we've been working hard on their brand so that is a nice review so thank you emily but well done emily well done to you oh i i messed up i think so uh, we do have a sponsor and i was just yeah. confirming that the url is up and running i did see it in the team notes i believe it's up and running yes, yes. i just mistyped it now so uh, our sponsor is bright local yes uh-huh and if you go back and listen to the two previous podcasts, they were really about SEO local, not not entirely because of them. We were kind of uh, excited. SEO local is hot right now. Okay, yeah. like SEO local is where you should be focusing your time to to get the most return the quickest. And there's not a lot of good tools for local, Chris. So uh, Bright Local is advancing outside of the NAP listing citations, that sort of thing. And it, it's really kind of like research based. Uh, so you can really see how you're ranking locally. And if you have multi-location, it's really important. So there's not a lot of tools for it. Bright Local is a great tool. So Yeah. yeah. And they are a sponsor. So we're really excited about that. Um, they gave a special, right? They, yeah. So there's certain programs that uh, they have. Like, so it's a like, you know, what is it? A little asterisk, like you have to qualify for one of the programs, mm. but they'll give you $75 in credits. And, and, and that's nice. And, and they do like a lot of like citation review to make sure like citation management, that sort of thing. So it depends on that. But if you go to the like best dash SEO dash podcast after bright local, uh, you'll have all that information there and you can sign up there. So, so go that's check it bright local.com forward slash best slash dash yes. SEO dash podcast. Yep. And that'll get them to that yep. deal. Excellent. And if you, if, like, if you don't know what bright local is, we're probably going to mention them a few times in this podcast. So you have a good sense. It is a tool that you should be using. Like it's, uh, and, well, if, lo a, if local is important to you, um, there's and not a lot be. of great tools out there. Um, and they've really expanded outside of like the, just the NAP listing citations uh, to really like a, a third party listening tool. I like some of the other big tools and some of our other sponsors, uh, but <laughs> specifically on local and on map. So it's really nice to have. Yeah. Excellent. 
and our article, and we're, we're really just going to jump into this right now, is 10 local SEO strategies for doctors and dentists. Um, and he's going to well, we're doing we're doing a lot of healthcare marketing yep. you're about to start a spa buy a spa yeah yeah, yeah yeah um so you know we're we're helping out a lot of different trades we're helping a lot of different professional services uh certainly doctors and dentists there's a great focus there mm. uh and we've seen great results across the board with a number of different kind of uh like doctors and dentists so i thought this was a great article to uh talk about them from a local standpoint i i agree Google contributes a large percentage of traffic to many healthcare websites. For doctor appointment bookings, 57% of patients started by using an online search. Like none of this is gonna be really surprising, but I think it's worth reviewing. Local, local SEO has become necessary for all modern dental and medical practices that want to harness the internet's potential and use it to grow their profits. Let's be realistic. It's only in extreme cases where uh, a, a, a medical doctor that you're looking for, you're really going to travel that far, right? Yeah, it's going to be proximity. You're going to stay unless it's close. a specialist a or some kind of and... some kind of surgery. Yeah, and we get that. I mean, we're I think the largest medical center on the planet here in Houston, like MD Anderson. I yeah. mean, people come from everywhere. Yeah, so. so so that is a situation where it's a it's a broader scale. In for the most part, your medical. SEO and your dental SEO, especially your dental. Do you know that there are more dental offices than there are Starbucks? I did not know that. Yeah. The thing that you told me that was interesting when we were talking the other day is you said back in the day, like mm. back in the beginning of Google, uh, like plastic. When you use the hand crank. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like, well, we're, you know, we're hitting the next wave with AI, of course, right? Like this is like the net, this is the biggest thing that uh, Bill Gates said since the visual interface, mm. like the, the, or the graphical interface from the DOS prompts, right? Like this is the it's, biggest it's interesting advancement. That he, he conveniently skips the internet in general <laughs> because I would, because he missed the boat on the internet, right? Like I would argue that it's maybe graphical user interface and then the internet. <laughs> In fact, maybe it's the internet and then the graphical user interface. Well, yeah, yeah. Like I like Microsoft, but um, you know, <laughs> but but what I would tell you is what what you mentioned to me. What was interesting is when Google was starting out mm -hmm. and when they were really going uh, ba based on how the algorithm worked is they had no preference for local. So yeah. people out in LA that were like plastic surgeons or whatever, I don't know what the analogy you're using, but they show up in Houston. Yeah, right? no, if or, you were or, in Houston and you searched up dentist. Dentist, yeah. It, it was, or plastics or whatever, it was the person who placed best or in, in dentist Google nationally. Ever, yeah. Nationally. So that wasn't that useful, yeah. right? Because unless you're a big movie star plastic surgeon, which we're doing a lot of plastic surgeons now, so plastic surgeons give us a call. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, like, it didn't help, right? So it was there wasn't this local proximity that was really important. So I like the evolution of the internet has become more personalized and it's more helpful for your searches. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and what would happen is you'd like, you know, you'd type dentist and then it would be the dentist in LA and you're like, oh, dentist in Houston. And then that's too broad. And then you have to like narrow it down to a neighborhood or a suburb or whatever. But that was the process. Now, now it's a lot easier. Yeah. The other thing that I remember, and I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, is you could make a change to the page, submit it, and then redo the search, and it would update. Your search result after you just submitted it would be an updated search result having processed that page already. Wow. Right? How nice was that? Because then you can like, I'm not in first, I'm not in first, whatever. But anyway. There were, so interesting. Well, okay, we're going on tangents. We'll have to save for the green room, but okay. <laughs> let's get into this. What is local SEO? So local SEO is a type of SEO that helps your website appear higher in the search results for local specific searches. Yes. As an example, dentist in Houston. Obviously that phrase comes from before you could just type dentist near me because Google figures that out now. Why should doctors and dentists consider local SEO? If you if you need some reasons, let me give you some. <laughs> Let's be realistic. If someone feels that they need a dentist, uh, they're going to turn to Google and they're going to type in the phrase dentist near me, dentist in Houston, dentist in yeah. Katie, right? That's what's going to happen. Best, top, whatever. Yep. 
a local and maybe even dentist reviews, right? Yeah. But that's a different After topic. they find it, like depending on where they are in their search. Yeah. Yep. A local SEO helps you save on costly online ads, which reduces your marketing spend and eventually pushes your bottom line. The reality is the value coming from the customers that you garner is significantly more valuable than the expense of, you know, whether if you're going to do it yourself, it's just your time. If you're going to hire an organization and they do it well, um, whatever that cost is, is really not relevant compared to the value of the customers that they're bringing. Local SEO brings to your practice increased appointments and more revenue. Is that enough reasons that a doctor or dentist should I think every local? dentist out there and anybody listening to this knows how important Google is and how important local is and how important rankings are. Um, the thing that I don't think people talk too much about is how important conversion rate optimization is mm. once they get to your site, yep. right? It, it, because a a person searching for your site, what is it? 96, 98% of people leave and never come back. And that's why remarketing is so important. So when those people get there, it's really important to give them the information they need to help them convert and take that next step. And so what I see actually with a lot now, right? When I like dentists and healthcare professionals is, okay, they're ranking and then they have like two reviews and they're both bad. Like yeah. there's like reputation why, why management. Why getting business? Yeah. Like, like I, I went and got blood drawn the other day and I was looking up places and all the places I looked at were like 2.5 stars or less. And I was like. So you're, you're just looking for the three star yeah, place? <laughs> I'm like, uh, where do I need to go get blood out of these choices? And so reputation management was a big issue and also being able to find uh, how to do whatever I need to do to sign up. And I actually signed up at the wrong location because they had multiple locations, right. but in office, it was fantastic. It was like, drop your card here. It scans it, turn it over, scans it. It connects you in. It rerouted me from the different location to, to the, the location. location I was in. Yeah. So they spent a lot of time in office and, they, and it was very slick. And actually the service was great. Okay. But online, they, they Looked haven't like garbage. Yeah. yeah they, they didn't pay attention. Now, did you glance at some of those reviews? I mean, I can imagine you just got blood drawn. Like, yeah, that's like tough. If they miss a vein, right, which happens, and it's not entire like the more skilled they are, the better they are. But I can definitely see that they're going to get a lot more negative well, reviews they need to, even than average. Well, yeah, I think so. But then you need to have a program in place to get positive yep. reviews, and you need to be actively managing your reputation to to combat that. I right? mean, it literally should be a band aid on the elbow that says "Leave us a review." Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah, that's really good. Right? Yeah. Like, because you got a future in this, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I should get into marketing. Yeah, you should get into marketing, right? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. 10 practical local SEO strategies. Number one, <laughs> list your practice on Google Business Profile. Um, so many yeah. businesses I know, okay, doctor businesses don't have a picture, don't have anything. Oh, we'll they might have claimed the review. We'll get that. Oh, oh, we'll get to that too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you need to have your practice listed on Google Business Profile. It used to be GMB, now it's GBP. Yeah. Um, you like you can't leverage local SEO without it. It is a must. Sometimes Google automatically creates your business listing on GBP. In that case, you would need to claim that listing, verify it, check it for accuracy, and ensure it does not drive yes. your prospective patients away by disseminating incorrect information. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Well, like days of operation, yeah, right? that, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Adding the appointment booking link to your Google business profile can instantly increase your appointment bookings. They gave one stat that a client saw a 44% increase in appointment bookings after adding the appointment booking link. Now, well, well think about it. You, you can convert somebody if you have positive reviews and you have your profile filled out without them even going to your website. And that's what Google wants. They don't want you to leave Google ever. And you gotta, you gotta do it so it's super easy. I, I, I was watching a comedian last night. Can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was talking about how his his a good day for him is when he doesn't have to replay re, uh, uh, redo a password, right? <laughs> then, you know, redo the password, and then that's in an email account, and there's another email account attached to it that you can't get to, and he goes through all this process, and the whole purpose was so that. He spent three hours, so he didn't spend 10 minutes on the phone with the pizza guy. 
Like people <laughs> will do that. People do that. Well, Make it easy. People are changing the way they interact online for sure. But I, I think the booking link and uh, they're adding like product features. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, yep. Google's really uh, taking it to the next level because I think they want to compete with Amazon. Yeah. You know, to to a certain degree, like these paid ads are not all to Amazon. You can you can bypass Amazon, not pay their margins. You can pay it to Google. Google wants that business. So yeah, for sure. All right. So first, list your practice on Google Business Profile. Number two, double down on keyword research. Yes. To start your local keyword research, you first need to be intuitive and get into your patient's mind. What do you think they think when you are looking for a doctor or dentist? Brainstorm a bunch of key phrases, create a list, and then find a keyword research tool and search the phrases from your list. Yeah. The, there, this is huge. I, I can tell you that that's typically the first step we see with a lot of clients that come to us. Mm. Do they have an SEO strategy? And it's first is like, does Google even understand what kind of company they are? And are they ranking for their name? And we're not 100% sure if they are not. What are you looking at? It just there's a, a message on the screen. It says, please set the clock. That's probably the message on the camera. Yeah, it's yeah, well, anybody watching from... this, like set your clock because <laughs> we just had we, we just had like daylight saves time. It's a uh, PSA. It's a public service. Yeah, so we're, yeah, set exactly. your clock. yeah. It's all. It will good. be gone on the next broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but here we we have a service, Chris. That that we just actually had someone upgrade to our advanced service of a keyword strategy audit. Mm, so yeah, yeah. we do a keyword strategy audit. We'll figure out what your keywords are. We send you a questionnaire. You fill it out. And then in about a week, week and a half, we get you on the phone with a digital marketing expert, actually a SEO expert, and he goes through that, answers any more questions. And then from that, we could roll into other services or things like that. But keyword research is so important that it's an actual service we offer on our website. And it's probably one of the number one, number one, like use things that we do with a client first, yep. right? When they come in. Typically, if they want to get started on SEO or if they're doing SEO, it's like, hey, what's your footprint? Footprint. I can't talk today either. <laughs> um, and what it, you know, what are you ranking for SEO wise? Can I see the strategy of what's going on? You're paying for SEO. What's the strategy look like? Are you ranking for your name first? Are does Google understand what type of business you are second? And then third is, are you ranking for the keywords you want to rank for, or are there even any uncovered keywords you don't know about that you might want to rank for because they're low hanging fruit. So keyword research is, is really quite powerful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, really important. Uh, all right. So number three, capitalize on Google posts. Yes. Um, Google posts is a free tool that offers local businesses a fantastic opportunity to engage and communicate with their audience. Google posts allow you to display up to 10 of your most recent posts some sources say that those 10 or stay live for about seven days. So as you post them, they stay live for about seven days. Use this space for announcements, offers to promote your services, to explain your features to the audience, to explain how your features are better than the features. In this case, how you're a better dentist than your competitor, how you've got more reviews in the actual post, how you have better, you went to a better school, whatever it is, explain that in the Google post. Now, Here's a pro tip. Make sure mm -hmm. to use UTM parameters so you can track how much traffic is coming from your Google posts. No, absolutely. What I would tell you is uh, the the maps kind of search engine is actually a different search engine. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about it being a different search engine, this is blogs on that search engine that give you more contextual information and also links to the rest of your site and also to send those signals to Google on what's relevant, what kind of services you're offering, what area you're in, what you're talking about. And this is an area that is not being utilized by everyone. And if you want to rank in maps, you need to be doing posts and uh, thinking about the types of content you're posting. The are, are you contextually relevant to your industry, to the services, to the locations? Where are those links going to? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of opportunity to do stuff here with Google Posts. And you can add, I think, add up to 10 pictures too. Yeah. So that's, again, more context for the, the map search engine to help you rank. Yeah. And it is critical to have a proactive Google Post strategy. 
you will need to work on not only sharing Google posts, but also updating them as the situation changes. Let's say your practice is offering free flu shots close to the flu season. Once flu season passes, you need to replace that post. So you got to be relevant. Yeah. For, for dentists like teeth whitening, we run a, uh some teeth whitening campaigns do really well to, to get people to, to show interest, but you have to follow up with them too, uh, quickly. Like because basically there's... whenever they sign up for whatever offer you want to connect with them when they're still in that mindset, because once they move out of that mindset, they're not a target target pro prospect anymore. You have to wait till they're back in they're that more mode. like a cold. Lead yeah. At that point. yeah. Yeah. So right. Crisp, concise, and to the point copy that clearly communicates the values you want to share. There is a 1500 character limit. Google. That's posts, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Google posts come at zero cost and offer an excellent opportunity for you to engage with your audience and promote your service. You will need a verified Google business profile to be able to leverage this tool, which really means see tip number one. There you go. Make your Google business profile. All right. Number four health and safety attributes. So really ever since the pandemic, Google has included health and safety attributes in GBP listings. Um, you can actually include other things, right? So it's probably less of a concern, except we're physicians, right? And in this case, well, we're talking of, about- Yeah, dentists. there's potentially a lot of sick people walking in there, like depending on uh, what what you're offering. If, if not, but like people wanna know what kind of safety precautions you're taking, like are mass required, uh, are, appointments necessary or not because some some like chiropractors are like walk-in chiropractors and stuff like mm -hmm. that yeah yeah um you can also include attributes like whether patients need to book an appointment beforehand or can they just get a walk-in appointment so you want to yeah, make that good. clear you can add the attributes directly to your listing through gbp so go see tip number one <laughs> number five nap and office hours consistency 62 percent of respondents said that they use gbp listings to find business contact numbers and addresses i do uh, yes <laughs> yes i think i think that the other 38 percent don't realize that they're using gbp <laughs> it's just gbp that they're using yeah i mean i i unless they have it in their phone or they know how to get there like or something like that i think the only thing that how people are finding businesses besides let's say like google or search engines is like just referrals like they have a doctor or they ask their friends and they're using social media actually to get that referral that it's just transformed the the medium in which it's communicated but if you don't have somebody that's going to refer you go to the phone book and the phone books google right, right. and then you want to you, you you need the phone number you need the address you need like name address phone number like you go to Google and that listing should be right. That is the, that is the main source of truth. Yeah. And then, you know, use bright local for all the other sub, uh, you know, nap listings, like basically, yeah. because a lot of them are pointing to Google. Like, so you can use like aggregators to, to push that out. Um, but getting all those big listings, that's a big part of, uh, SEO local that I think people miss. They try the to citations, get, yeah. yeah, they get advanced and, you know, do the basics like right? for each industry, there's a specific set of like 50 citations that you should probably do. I know for doctors and dentists specifically, there is a set of citations uh, that rank higher, like health grades and yep. stuff like that. And then there's like the top, you know, 100, 150, even more citations for like businesses in general. Those are something you should be doing that should be part of your core SEO strategy. If it's not, go revisit it, go audit it, uh, make sure you're doing your citations, make sure that your Google My Business is up to date. So, by the way, we didn't mention the author of this book. It's at, of this article, Atul Jindal. Okay. It's his name. Um, and he points out in terms of having your hours, he just goes in and gives an example of, hey, imagine. You, your GBP listing says that you're open between two and four, but you're not on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Maybe the other days you are because that's the default setting of Google from nine to five and you haven't updated it. Now they're calling you like somebody's yeah. like, well, why aren't they picking up? Why aren't they picking up? Why aren't People they picking take up? lunch and they're not on there, like updating those listings. That, that's certainly something you should do. Because that's a bad experience. And he points out that they're likely to leave a negative review. Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen I mean, we that got a, at we pharmacies. Had a, we got a negative review recently. 
because they're like, hey, I'm calling and, and like I can't get a hold of you. Now, it was from John Doe and it's since been removed. So, uh. <laughs> well, yeah, I you mean, you got to be careful with that. Yeah. You, like if people are trying to get a hold of you by phone, some people want to talk to a live person. They don't want to run through an automated service. Yep. So you need to be available by phone and, and that's important. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Number six, local landing pages. When doing local SEO, the most viable option and creating local landing pages, the most viable option is to link the CTA on your GBV listing, so the call to action, to your local keyword relevant landing page. Yes. Right? That, Think about your users' problems and try to address them on your landing page. So if you have multi-location, you want to link it to a specific page that's associated with that specific local locate, area, yeah. like local area. A lot of people just link it to their homepage. Yeah. No. <laughs> more more relevant if you're actually taking them from that GBP listing to the page that's relevant to their situation. Yeah, there there needs to be a connection, just like when you run AdWords, um, whatever the offer is needs to be on that page or it's not going to convert. So I don't know why I'm losing my voice all of a sudden, <laughs> but linking that to that page and having some kind of connection for what you're ranking for is part of uh, the algorithm that you need to look yeah. at, right? So, and and it's a better experience, right? We always talk about the totally. good experience to the Google user and they'll stay longer and Google sees and knows that. Uh, on this mm -hmm. page, you wanna talk about the benefits, not the features of your service, including attractive, appealing images across your pages to keep the audience engaged. Not just attractive, appealing images in general, right. but location relevant images. So they're like, oh, I know that place. Like that's right around the corner from the pizza and, shop. And depending on your type of business, I can tell you that, um, national search seo is fantastic however there are certain businesses that g and is where it's at yeah right and so it's it's just important to to know that and especially for doctors on on times on how to set up appointments additional information people need those specific things and they're going to go to the google business profile to look for them first yep. they they would rather them just be there than having to search the website for them and you'll get a lot more traffic to your website um, as well as bookings, uh, if you really optimize for this. So, so I think it's really something to make sure you keep in mind when you're putting your marketing dollars out there. Yep. Um, I don't, I don't think that, uh, a lot of doctors pay any attention to their online reviews. Um, I think certainly dentists do. I just think it depends on the person who you're talking to. Um, but the thing is if you're doing it and other people are not, that gives you a competitive advantage. Yep. And so the more you show up, the more you rank, the more uh, patients will fill up. And it's a good way to keep your practice healthy. Practice healthy. <laughs> On that landing page, try to include social proof like testimonials and reviews and trust yes. signals, like awards and certifications on the page to make your users trust your practice. Also place a CTA strategically on the page, embed a dynamic map at the bottom of the landing page, making it easier for searchers to locate your. So, so they were on GBP, which is a great way to find you and navigate to you. Now they've clicked through on your CTA from your GPP to your landing page. And, um, and, and when they do make sure that there's a map there again, that they can use. Yeah, no, I, I putting that on uh, the map embed on there is super important. That helps give Google's more signals. Um, even a little blurb about, your, your your team or your practice where they can see pictures of you mm. like not using stock images having those trust symbols the testimonials all those things is people are, if they have no frame of reference that's their first experience with your brand so that page needs to have extra attention to make sure it gives the warm and fuzzies i yep. guess so that people continue to move forward and look for that but reviews for new doctors are huge yep and and i just I don't think enough doctors are focusing on that. Um, I think dentists are a little bit more uh, attentive, yeah. but I think doctors in general, it depends on like what type of doctor you are, but focusing on reviews and reputation management in addition to your Google My Business is super important. So, All right, let's talk about number seven. This is the seventh of local SEO strategies for doctors and dentists, uh, local link building. So Google favors websites with high volume of backlinks because it sees such websites as trustworthy and authoritative. I think Matt and I would both agree that it's not necessarily <laughs> high volume backlinks, but it's high quality backlinks. And if you can have high quality, high volume of high quality, that's, that's of the real winner. 
I think it's relevancy. Like, like, what are you trying to rank for? Are the links similar that the links coming to? Are they ranking for similar things than that? Do they you, make sense? Yeah, yeah. Do they make sense? And and if you have sites that are uh, talking about everything linking to you, they're they're not very niche specific. So, you know, just really focusing on relevant links is super important. The process of acquiring links from your local websites is called local link building. You can create helpful. I think there might be some. I don't know, keyword application in this article. <laughs> we won't call it stuffing. We'll call it application. You can create helpful content con content for doctors and dentists and get it posted on your community blog. If your practice makes enough revenue, you can sponsor a local school team. And we've seen this and recommended this or students from a local school or college to get links from those institutions. We've certainly done that. Well, I would also tell you like what you were talking about is if you do your headers properly and you, um, put topics subtopics under other topics you don't you don't have to embed the keyword all the way through mm. um if you if you if you build the header structure right it organizes the information where google knows what you're talking about it's when you don't build the header structure right um, Google has no idea. You're like, this is an H2, this is an H2, this is H2, this is H2, or this is H1, this is H1. There's no hierarchy. There, there's yet. no hierarchy in it. So that that's certainly really, really important. Um, I have seen a lot of value because you're trying to rank for your specific specialty, but then you're also trying to rank for your specific location. And so getting those local local links that are high authority from the local newspaper or the um local you know church or the local um baseball club or whatever it gives you definition of where you're at in that area and google's trying to understand in the virtual world what's going on in the physical world and so every opportunity you have to make that connection like even like driving here driving directions, right? We're driving here, we're physically here. That's sending signals to Google that people come to this location. This location yeah. yeah, so those are important things to do. In terms of building local links, right? Most cities have local newspapers. You can create PR content for yes, the we newspaper, do that. offer advice, write articles for them, backlink, and, and, and make sure that they link back to your website. Most likely you'd like them to link to that location specific page for, Sometimes you can control area. that. Sometimes you can't. Yeah, um, you're lucky to get a link. Sometimes. But but yeah, Chamber of Commerce, there's local directories, there's meetup groups. There's a lot of ways to generate links. And really what you're doing is sending signals to Google to say, hey, I'm in this area. I operate in this area. I'm involved. People um, in this area know me. Yeah, yeah, like all these things. Number eight, make good use of GBP calls and messages. So businesses listed on GBP can get direct calls from Google searches. If you have included your phone number on GBP with the intent to receive calls, make sure you have someone to receive and respond to them. Responding to internet driven calls and messages or not responding to them can lead to bad customer experiences. Like watch out, you gotta be careful. Number nine, which we've touched on oh, quite a few times already, local reviews. 98% uh, of people read online reviews. Uh, I think the other 2% don't know what a review is and, and do read them still. Uh, the majority of healthcare <laughs> consumers say online reviews influence their decisions. Yes, ensure your BBP listing features enough diverse reviews to win the prospective patient's trust. Therefore, you will have to pursue positive reviews for the sake of your profit. And Matt just gave a, an example of the phlebotomist location that's got all negative reviews. I get it. They stuck you with a needle. So people are going to leave negative reviews, but you got to be so proactive that you have so many positive reviews. Like when you get that one negative review, because people are going to have a bad experience, yeah. whether you give them a bad experience or not, it doesn't matter. Right. Well, I think it's something between, I think it's called heuristics, but basically how people are making decisions, they're making assumptions uh, based on, the amount of reviews so i could think you have to have seven to 12 reviews for people to like be able to get a snapshot of right. like is this in their head statistically significant which it's not but in their head that's enough for them to get an idea yeah and then also if you offer different services 
they're looking for reviews about that particular service, service. right? Yeah. But then they're getting a general sense from the other things that you're leaving. And so the velocity of review, so how recently you've had reviews, how often you get reviews, what your reviews are about, the keywords, right? People don't think about that. The keywords, if they use positive things like, oh, Matt Bertram, marketing consultant, like if that, that helps contextually say what we are giving Google signals. So understanding that. And then again, I think the biggest thing you need to do is you need to have a program in place to consistently ask for reviews to build that process in yep. to what you're doing. So it becomes like clockwork, right? That you're, hey, can you leave us a review? Like maybe put it on your email, right? Hey, PS, can you please leave us a review? Um, or like every time you offer that service, hey, here's a QR code, here's a link. Will you please go leave us a review? Yep. Like and build it into your process. Super important. I can say my dentist has a good process because I was sitting in his uh, in his waiting area, and I think they got three reviews on the exit process. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So nice. They're, they're doing a good job incentivizing them with the Starbucks card. Now, I, I think I it's against that, I think yeah. it's against the <laughs> rules to incentivize a positive review. But to incentivize a review, I don't like I know that's not against Amazon's policy. Hmm. I would assume it's similar. Like if I just say, look, I don't care what your review is. Please leave me an honest review. I'll give you 10 bucks, which is never going to be completely honest. But I think that's OK. After I don't I I would have to look at that. I I know that they've kind of shifted around and also different platforms like Yelp and stuff like that. There's there's different, different rules. Yeah. There's different rules. But one of the things that I'm seeing is we were using this like review side that they were actually verifying reviews, right? Mm, so before, yeah. like I, I'm on the subcommittee of marketing for BBB and they were like the primary, like, you know, review keeper of like how the businesses are doing. Um, you know, we're working with them to help them stay more relevant uh, today because there's all these other review sites. But man, this one review site was actually verifying the email of who gave the review and of the person and then a verify review was worth more than a review and so then if you're telling google well here are my reviews and these are verified and these are unverified now there's a higher level of trust there right and google's preferencing that site over other sites so it, it's yeah. it's really interesting how important reviews are and how trustworthy they are something i've also seen is like review swaps so if you say hey chris if you leave me a review, I'll leave you a review. If you do that in in like a certain amount of time, it'll erase both of the reviews. Wow. So like, you know, reviews are really, really important because they're trying to give a act Google wants to give as most accurate representation of the service and how people experience the service as possible. So I think that that's su super important to do. Again, I don't know the rules exactly behind it, but but having a program to ask for reviews and having a way to make sure that your your what you're doing in the real world is being communicated in, in the virtual world yep. so key so yes all right and finally so this is 10 local seo strategies for doctors and dentists multiple professional listings at one address and this can apply to dentists and doctors regularly a lot of businesses but specifically them Google allows you to share an address with various other businesses sharing the same location and have an independent GBP for your business, given that your business is distinct and has its own tax identification number. He said code, but number. So, so that I think is speaking to like co-working spaces mainly. Well, and doctors are in the same building. Yeah. So many of them are in the same building. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think the difference is, I do know the rules behind this, is you need to have a place that you can get mail. So you need yep. to have your own mailbox and you need to have your own phone number. Yep. So that's that's basically the rules beh behind that. Um, and and doctor's offices do share a lot of uh, like business centers, uh, things like that. But yeah, for small smaller offices, it's also important to have your own listing even inside like a bigger hospital setting, because this is something that we haven't talked about much, but there's two books here for everyone watching oh, yeah. one, build your brand mania and one rise of the personal brand that you're your own brand as a doctor. 
as a dentist. Oh, very much. Right. So. Yeah. And, and you need to build You need that. to buy this book and read it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that, but I think you, you really should be looking at um, building your own brand online inside the brand of the hospital or the association, or depending on, on where you're working, you yourself have a distinct bedside manner. You yourself deliver service in a certain way. You, you yourself has special expertise and you should be over time building your, your brand equity online. Uh, and you know, that's what I actually talk a lot about and coach a lot about. Yep. So yeah. And write a book about, yeah. I got another book. No, I can trust. It's on Amazon. The, uh, the Kindle version, uh, the print books coming out soon. So, cool. Yeah. So you can and should create an in independent listing. If you have a clinic located within an office building that houses many other businesses, make sure you do that. Final word, local SEO can unlock a new traffic channel for your practice. Um, see tip number one. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think a lot of people listening to this, understand the importance of local SEO, but we're trying to give you a playbook and a roadmap of how to do it better. So you get more results out of what um, you're doing. That's one of the number one things we look at when we bring clients in is how can we optimize their GNB to get them traffic to their site and convert quickly. And, and the number one way for most businesses we've done that is through the GNB listing. And it typically is one of your highest referral sources to your website. So it's not something that should be overlooked. Um, it's not something that you should just give lip service to. It's really where you should invest your time and invest your money, especially if you're a local business. Yep. All right. Remember to check out our sponsor. You can get $75 worth of citation builder credits. You just need to go to brightlocal.com forward slash best dash SEO dash podcast take advantage of that 75 dollars yes. worth of citation building credits again i think you have to be on the right tier but but you'll be able to do that pretty easily um we would if you're if you're watching us right now hello if you're watching us hey. you're on youtube make sure that you subscribe make sure you click that notification bell connect with us on instagram i'm going to give you two instagram.com forward slash the best seo podcast and then also tiktok.com forward slash you got to use that at symbol uh best seo podcast so it doesn't have the d in front of it uh find us connect with us please we really like engaging with you and if you would like uh to grow your business with the largest simplest marketing tool on the planet the internet <laughs> go to ewr digital for increased revenue in your business uh once you get to ewrdigital.com you're going to click the free consultation button you're going to schedule time that works for you you're going to get some really good free advice yeah uh, and then you're going to show a path that you might want to go down to work with us yeah so. there, there, we, there might be a, a paid option uh to do some paid consulting maybe you need an audit maybe you need a workshop or maybe you need to start services. We don't know. So typically we like to to move people into some kind of strategy first to, to get a baseline of what we're doing, to maybe do an audit of what's going on to give you a more accurate proposal. Um, we have uh, a really smooth process. People really enjoy it. We have a lot of positive reviews about it. We encourage you to come check us out if you need help. Um, we are focused on uh, doctors and dentists and we would love to help you out and anyone else in the healthcare space. Yes. Um, so go click that free consultation and get your free consultation. Um, this has been podcast number 571. Uh, until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. My name is Matt Bertram. Bye-bye for, for now. now.